something that I do not too often is just get another Airbnb and spend a day or so there. Recently, Alex and I, we just got an Airbnb here in San Cristobal just to see kind of a different location from where we're currently living. So I currently live in the east part of town, basically in a region called El Cerrillo. So it's kind of like the north east corner, if you will, of San Chris. And so I got an Airbnb that's south. It's actually on the cusp between what's called the Guadalupe region and the Santa Lucia region. It's like, it's like on the cusp, it's on the street. Henry's here, we have a couch. I got my stuff that I threw everywhere. Okay, I'm calm. Got the basics, the boy. So, someone else's place. Interesting, yeah? Yeah. Crumb. And so, we have a fake partition, which I'm pretty sure could open. Although, yeah, I'm not, I don't know if this one opens, but if we go upstairs, that can definitely open. But oh, we're not supposed to, because it's not ours. Yeah. How do the beds feel? They feel nice. Good. And the bathroom is here. Well, try not to ever jump on somebody else's bed because you could break it anyway, so. Yeah. These ones, you bonk your head. Yes. Take your shirt. I can touch a little taller there. We can see. Not the prettiest view. Good, but we can view. see the street and whatever might be happening on the street. dog could probably squeeze out if he really wanted to. Probably doesn't want to because that would kill him though. Yeah, he's unlikely to do it. So, so while he's zooming around, don't keep this open. I mean, we need air circulation, Alex. <laughs> Speaking of which, so no air circulation. So yeah, keeping the window open is probably what I will do. So it's a little darker than I like. I'm a fan of windows, but you can't have it all. We've got the necessities, it's a cute little place. Okay, so we have no water, but we do have lots of cooking supplies. Do I have a fridge? I do have a fridge. Okay. It's over here, so it's kind of in an awkward position. But we have a small fridge. So we've got you know, cups, plates, glasses, utensils, just a street closer from the south viewpoint of the main kind of streets really changed the vibe. It felt like I was much closer to a lot of the restaurants, to a lot of the conveniences. I'm distance wise only one block over, but it just felt a lot closer. And one of the fun things about just getting an Airbnb for the day is it's a mini vacation. So it's a day of not doing what you traditionally do. So we played games, we went to restaurants that we hadn't tried before, and we just we just enjoyed ourselves. We had a good old time. And so I thought I would share this Airbnb. We got a thirsty dog. A little miscellaneous store. Chips and I see water. 
so that's the lavanderia and the white building is ours there's another convenience store that has eggs What I don't see is um, veggies. Okay, so this is Diego Dublé, actually. So at this Cyber O, it's got internet. Although the Airbnb I'm at seems to have perfectly good internet so far, so doubt I'll have to use it. So we got blankets and such. Ooh, that looks delicious. I've never been there. And then that place, that place has fruits and veggies as well as drinks. Coffee, more fruits and vegetables. Like this road has everything, honestly. Another bakery. And street vendors. This side is not the walking. That's where we came from. That's the walking street. More fruits, veggies. That has chicken. That has some sort of vegetables. So again, lots of fruits and veggies. Roots is a very popular place for baked breads. French style. Oh, this is um ice cream, Ooh, ice cream and chocolate, for Messia. Okay. Donkey bowl next to the cupcake place. Oh, it's gotta have a variety of places on it. There were two reasons why I wouldn't necessarily rent this place long term. One is that um, there's a lot of connecting doors between my Airbnb and another home. Like there were two points I could literally see inside their home because of the way the doors were and 
which means they could see inside my home, they could see me if they wanted to, and that, that to me is a huge no. And the other thing that I think is actually kind of common in a lot of houses here, and I know this because Karen and I went and visited several houses that she was considering moving into, there are metal rooftops on some of these. And so on this day that we stayed at this Airbnb, it was a rainy night, as is frequent here. And it was so much louder than I ever expected. There, there were a couple moments where Alex and I looked at each other like, can we sleep through this? Spoiler alert, we absolutely slept perfectly through it. And I think the rain sound even helped with our sleep. So it actually worked out really well, but there was a moment where we wondered, like, could we even sleep here? Cause it felt so loud, but we did. It's just something fun that we do every once in a while. We've got another one planned for October. It's just nice. It's just a neat thing. We only did it once in Merida and then we also did a dog sitting gig. So we, we left our house only twice when we were in Merida. I kind of wish that I had done it more there. One, just to get to know the different areas. One of the big benefits of doing this in Merida is your options on Uber Eats and Rappi change. Like there's a part of you that thinks, oh, when I order from Uber Eats or Rappi, I can order from anywhere in Merida. And it's actually not true. You, you're you limited to a geographical region, a geographical portion of Merida. And so especially when I went north and watched my friend's dog, the options were pretty dramatic from where I was at. Like I did not realize some of the limitations of Uber Eats when I was in Merida because I just kind of assumed that everything was available. But I quickly learned there that it, it really is a huge difference depending on what part of town you're in. Here, I don't have Uber Eats, I don't have Rappi, so we walk to any restaurants we want to try. And so what I appreciated about this place is it was really within walking distance to several places. And it's kind of weird to say everywhere in San Chris is within walking distance, but I just mean that when you kind of go out your door, for, for where I live currently, when I go out my door, I have basically two options when it comes to restaurants, both of which, thank goodness, I love. For example, you know, where Karen was staying originally, she had so many restaurant options in front of her. Like it was, it's kind of crazy because she lived almost in Central where of course the majority of restaurants are. Anyway, my point is it, it felt much closer to town and I really enjoyed it. Why I'm really glad that I chose this place, I didn't realize it when I found it. I just, you know, when I arrived, I realized they have lots and lots of pictures throughout the Airbnb of San Chris back in the day. Now they're not all dated to where I know exactly how old these pictures are, but it was really neat to see kind of the growth that San Chris has seen in the last, we'll say 50 plus years. Yeah, so it was super neat. I took a lot of pictures of pictures. Now some of them are pretty obvious. They're of churches that are well known and other pictures, I'm just, I don't know where they're from. It would be neat if I could find where these pictures are of so I could take like a before and now kind of picture of San Chris. But anyway, it was something super fascinating. It was a fun night because again, we went out, we ate different kinds of food that was yummy and we came home and we played games. And so it was just a nice little staycation here in San Chris and something I recommend you do on occasion. This is something that you can do wherever you live. There's Airbnb slash rentals all over the place and it's just nice. Even if you're in the same city, it's really nice just to get kind of a different viewpoint of how a different family lives than yourself. Alex looks like he's in a sleeping mode, which is quite normal for him. So I went and got some local pastries. The best time to go to a bakery is actually in the afternoon. I would say after one o'clock, you're probably gonna get more of the fresh options, but obviously there's no rules. And so some places do have fresh bread in the morning, but probably not right when they get up. In the US, I think bakers wake up at like four or five in the morning so that we can be fed at six. But here, no, they have life, families sleeping in. And so 
afternoon is usually the freshest. This is the Zokoro. We are gonna find coffee on this road. So this is our street, and then that takes us back to the Airbnb. We're gonna go south a little bit. Lots of restaurants on this road. This is Insurgents. This also takes you to the Sweets and Artisan shop, which I enjoy going, especially with Alex. We almost always buy a toy when we get there. We don't normally go to this particular one because it's not as close to our house, but... Skills. And then if I keep going that way, we'll go to the Dulce the Artisan. And so they actually sell one of the best coffees that I've had. Their coffee is probably 10 or 12 pesos, I forget. Okay, so there's two entrances, two gates that open for this church. They only open, I believe, Saturday and Sunday mornings, and then they close again. So it's literally just for service. And then right across from there, that is a bunch of little restaurants. I'm assuming they're opening right now, so they might be open. But on the other side of that is the Artisan store, OXO. This is one of my favorite areas. Location-wise, this Airbnb rocks. Being close to the, this Artisan area is probably kind of ideal because you're close to everything when it comes to just the best restaurants, a lot of stores all the things. The only negative, maybe, maybe, is for the price, obviously it costs a lot more to be in this area. So for a long-term perspective, I would probably not live in this area. But again, super convenient, pretty area. Gotta love it. Okay, so now let's go back home. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy.